I was shooting video at Aprovecho Research Center's summer stove camp in 2011 when Executive Director Dean Steele interrupted a presentation to make some comments, and he concluded by saying something about one of the engineers, Ryan Thompson, that I found somewhat provocative and mysterious. Here's that part. So all of you remember, you, you are all invited, you know, if the bug bites you hard enough, and if you are seriously going to pursue and solve a problem, we welcome you with open arms. And we, we will help support you. We will, you know, make your life as easy as we can. We welcome you to be a part of our community. And, you know, but it has to have bitten you hard enough where you will not stop until you solve the problem. You know, when Ryan came here, uh, I said, well, when can I start paying you? And he said, after I solved my first miracle. Hallelujah. What was that about? Anyway, fast forward to a year later, Ryan was leaving to go to grad school. I remembered that moment, and I decided to find out what Dean was talking about. So I tracked down Ryan, Dean, and lab manager Sam Benson to get to the bottom of this. You know, like right when I graduated, a lot of my friends, my engineering friends were making, they just went straight to a uh, little cubicle, were making lots of money. But um, I did not, the last thing I wanted to do was sit in a little cubicle at a computer all day. And so I kind of farted around and I did some solar energy work and a lot of construction work. And um, I ended up doing wildlife work. And uh, my friends kind of got me into that because that's what they did. So. And then I lived off the grid for a year, so I built, I fixed up this house and lived in it off the grid, and I needed to cook food, and so I built some wood stoves to cook food, and so I found out about Aprovecho on the internet because I was researching, you know, uh, wood biomass cook stoves. So I used their design, Larry's 10 design principles to make a rocket stove. And I started cooking on it, and I, I was obviously, fa I just instantly became fascinated with it. I didn't really realize that you could make a living doing that, playing with stoves. Um, so, but I called Dean up. I called Aprovecho and Dean answered the phone. I was like, Dean, I want I wanted to come work there. Ryan, who, um, you know, we're talking about here, wandered up to Opro. And I looked at him and I said, oh my God, I mean, this guy, he'd been on the Privilof Islands studying birds. He, you know, had largely forgotten how to speak. Um, and he said, can I do anything here at Opro to help? And so I looked at him and I said, well, let's take a chance on this guy. And he was like, well, he's like, you can't just come work here. He's like, but you know, we have interns that come through. You can come do a volunteer internship, and that's where you start, and you see what happens from there. I mean, after a couple of weeks, I realized that this was my calling, you know? This was my purpose. Or that I, was, I found a really effective way that I could make a positive contribution to the world. And so I refused to leave. I was like, I'm not leaving, you know? Like, you guys better start paying me eventually, or, or I'll figure out. But, I, you know, I'm way into this. So we pretty much came at the same time and uh, Dean instructed us and we worked on a big charcoal project together, which is now being published. I just started testing charcoal stoves all day long, every day, and I did that for quite a while. He pretty much made a charcoal stove that is now being marketed under EcoZoom. And after he did that, he said, okay, that's not enough, I do more and he went to the emissions equipment and he made that into a much more marketable product almost by himself. And, and I saw the PEMS, I was like, well, that's amazing. I was like, some brilliant people invented that thing and I, and I hope I can even figure out how to use it. You know? I didn't know that he was you know, a super motivated person. He saw that we were using the hood and that this was the big tool for us to be able to see can we make stoves better can we change something see what happened make it better so when ryan came here he saw the pems the portable emissions measurement system 
And now what we're standing in front of is the LEMS, the Laboratory Emissions Measurement System. And because of his work, we're able to report uh, emissions factors that are of PM, CO2, and CO that are at a level of, of accuracy that the EPA will accept. We're also able to test a wider range of stoves, high power and low power stoves, very clean, very dirty stoves. And it's also much quieter and more fun to use. And so I just, it fell into my lap. I just kind of, by virtue, started working on the emissions equipment and it, it developed into a full-time job for me. And um, so over the years, once I started learning about it, uh, made, I've tried to just always improve upon it, just always make it better. Big thing that, that Ryan added to Aperretro is, uh, is an attention to detail that no one, no one has matched that attention to detail that he has. He, uh, I think that Ryan is an amazing example, who some, someone who came in with incredible skills who could do something very complicated like this. And it's necessary for the other research centers around the world to be able to measure the emissions. I don't know, I think Dean, Dean definitely paraphrased when he said that I said that I, I do not need to be paid until I make my first miracle. But I guess what I was implying was, what, what I was trying to say was, you know, I don't feel like I should just show up here and I deserve to be paid, but I'm gonna be working on an issue that's gonna be helping the world and Well, I don't know where <laughs> I'm going with that. So there you have it. An engineering grad wanders into the place, starts interning in hopes of doing something useful, and manages to become a world expert in emissions, inventing equipment to be used in testing centers throughout the world to improve the lives of millions, especially women and children. I'd call that a miracle. I just know we need a lot more people like Ryan in the world today willing to get their hands dirty working in the lab in the field and not give up until the problem is solved.